Came out to public this morning, set up basically where the bull dumps out of the marsh. The bull that I think this Boone and Crockett deer was living last year. came down here to a spot where a bunch of ridges dumped down into the creek here and it's kind of definitely in Flyers home range on the farm. It's the afternoon of Halloween. It's been a great weekend, but they're definitely getting ready to go because that buck I saw last night was panting. Anyway, I had flyers, which is like a mid-160s buck and a buck that we're going to shoot if we get a chance with a bow at like 50 yards this morning. And they were working right in. They were going to work within range. So it's really cool to have a plan almost work out. I definitely feel like this weekend has gone a lot better and I'm kind of reading things better, making better guesses. Unfortunately, I think I talked about it down there, the wind was just terrible. If nothing else, hope we'll be able to at least see him and see if he's spooked or not. I'm guessing this time of year, and I'm hoping he didn't catch my wind. He never threw his head up like he was smelling. He just instantly blew and ran whenever those does spooked.
today's Friday. I took today off and uh, gonna have a three day weekend. And there's another block. Does not appear to be a shooter. This morning I went to the the cattle lease and I set a kind of a pinch point, more of a travel corridor along the main creek, a bunch of creeks kind of joined together right there. There's like three branches that come in and a nice draw. But I decided I wanted to come to a spot with more food for the afternoon. I know it's the rut, so you kind of want to hunt movement patterns, not food sources. But when you have this big of a temp drop and you have this good of a food source, 12 acres of standing beans, a couple acres of greens, and you have I think there's like three main target bucks on this property that I'd shoot. It just seemed to make more sense than a pinch point in a property that we don't know whether anything big is even using it this year. So I did pass about 145 inch nine. He came by about uh, 30, 30, 35 yards. So got my heart racing a little bit. This center field is just a big hub and they all use it quite a bit. I tried grunting at him and 
he was interested, but he was kind of jump the fence and leave his dog to come fight me. So I'm gonna probably drink some coffee, honestly, because I've been watching him for about an hour and a half. <laughs> but this is fun. Hopefully they come out in the plot. He's done. He's gonna go now. He's done. <laughs> Big eight is dead. <sighs> I just saw him crash. Button stock me on a white tail. Yes! There they go. Big boy's dead though. Rally up the troops, he's dead. Stalked him. I watched him fall. So I watched him bed down and he was like right here. I knew he was, this green bush was my reference point. And man, yeah, he just couldn't see anything. Look at that. Once I got out of that blind, it was game over. Well, that would have been hard for him to see me. That worked out well. He stood up, turned around for some reason. And he walked up the hill. He knows where that arrow went. Blood right at impact. Pretty bloody. 
those right there. Yeah, that's what they're supposed to look like right there. Okay. Oh, he should be right down here somewhere. There he is. Right there. Yes. I think I might have made a good shot, huh? I think he's a five-year-old eight. Buck we've been watching for several years now. Just not a really great genetic buck, but five-year-old, we think. Could be four, but either way, needed to get him out. He definitely was one of the bosses in the herd and definitely want to make room for some better genetic deer. But still, just a stud buck, big frame. I'm pretty happy with him. And to be able to stock a whitetail, just a dream so just the way this hunt unfolded you couldn't ask for anything better and it was just a fun hunt so really this buck was my main target this weekend just because flyers hasn't been active and we have another mature buck that we want to get he's probably freaking who knows seven or eight years old but this year is probably the most active and definitely one you wanted to get I just thought I had to the best chance at him this weekend so I've been targeting him and uh, to just basically look out the window at first light and see him bedded with his doe at 70 yards was just surreal so what a fun morning I mean just intense just awesome here he is my 2021 bow buck it's hard to believe that my season's over feels like it just started in a lot of ways feels like it's can't even believe it's middle of November but in a lot of ways, it's been a really tough season, and uh, I just feel fortunate to fill my tag. Because I know a lot of times, uh, especially as of late, getting into the month of November and having some slower hunts, I was starting to wonder if I was going to be able to get it done. And, and that's fine if you go a season without filling a tag. I was going to be happy. I wasn't going to compromise and shoot an immature deer or anything like that. So stuck it out, and we just got really lucky. We were in the right place at the right time, and I was able to spot him locked down with his doe on Sunday morning I was able to fill my bow tag so couldn't be more happy especially with how the hunt went down uh, to give you a little backstory on this deer this is a deer that we call the big eight uh, the fourth or the fifth of the seventh who knows how many big eights we've had it seems like we've had a big eight almost every single year that we've had the farm and I believe he's a five and a half year old buck uh, based on trail camera pictures we have pictures of this deer going back uh, two seasons now uh, to 2019. In years past, he kind of roamed the whole farm. Our farm kind of sets up long and narrow and he was on both sides. In fact, uh, last year in 2020, I remember getting pictures of him clear on the east side of the property and then only, I think it was less than an hour later, it wasn't during the rut when he was cruising, less than an hour later he was almost a mile away, just like I said, long long and narrow property. He was definitely putting on miles that day. So really, um, I feel like last year his home range was bigger and covered our entire farm, whereas this year, the only pictures we've gotten over on the east side of our farm of him was uh, actually when he was in velvet. So ever since then, it seems like his range has really shrunk, which is also typical of an older buck, and it's kind of shifted to that west half of our property. So I was focusing on that half going into this weekend. I did make a set on the lease on uh, Friday morning, but um, like I said, focusing mainly on this buck this weekend and wanted to take him out. So fast forward to this season, give a little bit of a recap, short here, I'm gonna get long-winded, I think. But it had been going a little slow this year, to be honest. Um, minus this day, I had only had one day of good encounters with bucks that I would consider shooters. And that was Halloween day, morning and night. Um, in the morning, I had an encounter with flyers. At the time, I didn't even know it, to be honest. Uh, I discovered that after I watched the footage, I was filming a different buck, and in the brush through the viewfinder, I ended up scanning towards flyers, and he was right there, less than 50 yards away, coming right in, and the wind swirled, those caught me. 
And luckily the two bucks, they're two nice bucks, two, four. The one was another five-year-old, probably maybe four. And then there's flyers. And uh, I don't think they knew what went on, but any, in any case, they didn't come in after the dose spooked and they ran away. And then that evening I was making a play on flyers and I went up to the field uh, to the west of there and dad went to the field to the east and as luck would have it, flyers came out to the east and dad almost got a shot at him that night so I, evidently he wasn't too spooked but he just stayed right out of range and didn't get a shot and actually that night this buck came out in my field from the other side of the property and uh, he stayed out 250 yards or more uh, didn't come out until the last half hour of light uh, kind of low light footage but at at that point, I got to see him in person. I'm like, yeah, I'm gonna shoot that deer if he comes in. Uh, so that's kind of the start of things. I guess we knew he was mature and going into the season, but that was when I was like, yeah, I'm gonna shoot that deer if I can get a chance. After that second set of trail camera pictures of him up in that bean field, I figured they were gonna lock down somewhere in the switchgrass or we have on one side of that field switchgrass, on the other side is brushy, old grown up pasture. And I knew, I really figured they were going to be locked down around that field somewhere because it's a really similar setup to where dad saw that other buck locked down with the doe. So Sunday morning comes around and we've got 20 plus mile an hour winds again. And to be honest, I did not want to get out of bed. I did not want to go sit in the wind. And I've been doing all day sits up to this point. Um, the previous weekend I did three days of mostly all day sits. And then I was going off of two days of two additional days of all day sets. And that was a big factor, honestly, in my decision. I wanted to be in this region close to where I thought uh, they were locked down, just in the odd chance that the doe pulled and by me. But to be honest, the only good wind spot was this box blind that's down in a food plot. And it's only about 250 yards down the hill from this bean field that I thought they were around. But I really had a feeling they were on the switchgrass on their side. So I didn't, I didn't have high hopes, I gotta be honest. Um, and the wind just wasn't right. Access and wind wasn't right on the other side. So I was like, well, I'm just gonna go this box blind. I had to leave midday to come let the dog out up here. Uh, so it was gonna be what it was gonna be. And I was at least gonna have hopefully a comfortable sit in the box blind out of the wind in the little valley. And I thought, you know, maybe it'll be good movement for cruising bucks too. Maybe one of our other shooters will show up because it's down in that valley. I should have a decent wind, but they should be out of the wind. And that's where I decided to go. So the wind cover, and I got in there plenty early, allowed me to slip in. And as soon as I could see out of the blind, I saw him bedded with that doe only 73 yards away. And the crazy thing is I was sitting there in the dark and I was thinking, man, that hillside is really out of the wind. I wouldn't be surprised. I, I literally, I thought, man, it'd be crazy if he was just bedded right there locked down with the doe and as soon as I could see in my binos they were right there and it was awesome I'm like I'm in the chips he's almost in shooting range he only had to come you know 20 yards closer get in the plot it was basically where I set my max range it would have been about 45 yards and I'd have had a shot I thought man all I have to do is come through this fence gap and I have him and I was pumped so I ended up over the course of the morning watching him a couple hours I got some decent footage of him I was trying to keep the window closed at some points. Um, like I said, high winds are known to swirl, so I wanted to keep the window closed as much as possible. But I got to watch him fight off some little bucks all morning and really just stand around and do nothing with this doe. Just the craziest behavior. It was awesome. It was cool to see. I haven't gotten to see much of that myself. So watched him, big mature buck. He looked really impressive on the hoof. I was able to watch him drinking coffee all morning. And I just wasn't going to force a shot at 70 yards. There was times where he really tempted me, you know, standing in one spot and I practiced that far. But luckily I didn't have a pin, so I couldn't get too tempted. I only had pins out to 60 on my new bow. I figured that was good enough for whitetail hunting. But I knew if I didn't get him that day, we probably were going to have a chance at him during gun season. So I didn't want to force anything. As you guys see, uh, at one point he hops the fence and goes deeper in the cover. And I thought I had lost the doe. And then he went back in there looking for her, and I thought it was over. I was like thrilled with the encounter, but didn't think I was going to get him. Uh, he ends up circling back around, and I end up seeing the doe again. And of course, he comes back out, and we 
that's just an internal fence. All these are just internal old cattle dividing fences. So we can hunt back there, but I wasn't gonna be able to make a play on him back there. So he comes back out and at this point, no other bucks have come around for over an hour. Um, the doe is pretty content where they're at and he's got her pushed up in this corner. Just honestly, the perfect lockdown spot. They're out of the wind and he's got her pu pushed up against this corner where no other bucks can get to her because of these, this fence on the one side. He's on the downwind side of her. Man, I'm just putting this all together to be honest. He's on the downwind side of her. So if any bucks get downwind of him and them and smell her, he can fight them off really easily. I mean, he was king buck in that area. He wasn't too worried about it. Just the perfect lockdown spot. So I, they're standing around and I'm like, they're gonna bed down in there. And they finally did. And he bedded down facing directly away from me. And really it was pretty open from him to my blind. And so I was worried he was gonna catch me, but he faced directly away from me. And as soon as I saw that, I'm like, I'm stalking this buck. I wouldn't have done it if I didn't think I could um, kill him. If I thought I was gonna spook him, I wouldn't have done it. But it was just too perfect of a scenario. And I'm like, if I'm ever gonna stalk a whitetail, this is it. I might not ever get a situation this good either. So I planned out my route. I think I took one quick clip of him bedded down and zoomed out, put on the head cam and I went. I planned out my route, I was gonna get down. We had a sorghum screen and I walked the edge of the creek up. And at that point, the hill started to go over. I knew the exact bush she was bedded under that still is one of the only bushes that still had leaves. So I knew exactly where he was. The doe was out of sight. Um, later on, I was worried the doe was gonna get me because I didn't know exactly where she was. But I knew exactly where he was and I was able to sneak in. Honestly, pretty easy stock with the wind. Um, it had been wet that weekend, so pretty wet ground, quiet. And I was able to close within, within 30 yards, just effortlessly. I was able to close it in probably under five minutes. And I get up there. Um, finally start actually having to crawl because of the, the crest of the hill and get to where I can see the bush and I glass through the brush and I can see the tips of his antlers and I'm like, okay, sweet, he's still there, he's still bedded. And at that point the waiting game uh, started and I snuck into my final position. Had a couple of spots where I thought I was gonna stop and wait for him to stand up. And then I kept trying to maybe see if I could get an arrow into his bed. But as I went up the hill, I knew I was getting more and more likely of being busted by not only him, but I didn't know where the doe was exactly. I didn't want her to pick me off. I was kind of skylined. Um, when the sun would peek through the clouds, I had the sun at my back. So again, just perfect. But I was kind of skylined, so that was the only thing I, wor I was worried about. And the other thing was there was enough brush in between him and I, just mainly just sticker bushes, briars, that I was a little worried about the shot getting deflected. And I could pick a hole, but the thing that was really hurt my confidence was um, right where I thought he would, his vitals would be when he stood up, there was a hole in the briars about this big, and that's what I was gonna shoot through. I was gonna move, they were pretty close to me, so I could kind of move around and try to get a shot through the hole. And the problem was whenever the wind would pick up, which was good in some scenarios, but bad because my whole shooting lane would be swaying side to side. And I'm, I don't know how many different times I thought, I'm going up the hill, like this is not a good spot to shoot from. And then I'd talk myself out of it back and forth, back and forth. And ultimately I decided the best thing to do was just to wait for him to stand so I could try to get a shot as soon as he stood. And I just had to be ready. Just, you know, hand on the bow, um, release on the string. I was toggling with dang GoPro all the time and that was throwing me off, I was getting annoyed. And I couldn't leave it running the whole time because I didn't have enough SD space. I didn't know how long this encounter was gonna be. It ended up being over an hour that I was standing over him. Uh, less than 25 yards for sure. I think it might have even been less than 20. It's hard to tell. I didn't need a range of it. It was close enough. I ended up drawing on him six or seven times because whenever he would move his head, uh, I'd think, okay, he's going to stand up. And I'd click on the GoPro, draw my bow, rip it back, and I'd be ready. And then he'd go back to sleep or whatever the heck he was doing. Some of the coolest behavior, he would lay his chin down on the ground. I think I couldn't quite see his chin, but I kind of see him lay his chin down and then his antlers were just kind of be twitching. And then after a minute or so, he wouldn't sleep for more than a minute. He'd pop his head up and grunt, and then he'd start to look around, make sure no bucks were around, and then he'd kind of start dozing off again. So it just wore out, it was really cool. And when he finally did stand up, it happened so fast, I didn't even get to 
get the GoPro on, unfortunately, but he stood up, faced directly away from me. I was already at full draw at that point, but it was too late. He had already faced away from me, even though he was bedded broadside. And I, all I had was butt, <laughs> no shot. And I'm like, crap, but I'm staying pretty, pretty focused. And every time I would draw, my heart would just start racing. But it seems like in the heat of the moment, I stayed fairly calm, I don't know. I definitely lost it after the shot, but I was able to hold it together and I didn't make any stupid decisions, which I'm really happy about. And I saw his face away from me, I'm like, all right, just anchor and be ready for him to turn. And whenever you see vitals, you can make your shot through this hole. And unfortunately he never really did. He turned really fast and then actually trotted up the hill a few steps. And as he did that, like my instincts just took over. I didn't really plan anything, but if he went down the hill, I was gonna have zero shot. Now, he probably would have circled back around and messed around with the doe or something. I probably maybe would have got a shot. But if he went up the hill, it was also bad because he's out of my shooting lane. But if I walked up the hill, I could get another one. So at full draw, he starts trotting up the hill, and I just start walking with him because I'm standing up. And I take maybe three or four steps, maybe five, and I find a hole, and I stop him with a grunt. Either that or he saw me. I can't even honestly remember. I stop him. I'm already anchored. Put the pin on him. Shoot. Hear it hit, as um, soon as I heard it hit, and I knew where the pin was when I pulled the trigger, I knew he was absolutely toast. And it happened really fast, but I felt super confident. And he went up over the internal cattle fence there uh, with the doe, and then finally I see him down around in the bottom, and he's just plowing, I can see blood pouring. Um, he finally stops, he only made it about 50 yards, and I he stopped, and I had the GoPro at this point, it's probably too far to tell, but. I was glassing him and got to see him tip over there. So he stopped and got started getting all wobbly and ended up tipping over. So that is the story. He died uh, less than 20 yards from where I killed the stubby 10 actually in 2019. So pretty sweet. Um, I don't know that I'll ever get the chance to stock a whitetail again, at least successfully. Uh, Dad and I were talking and it's like, you have to have absolutely the perfect scenario and then you know, honestly, only two out of 10 times or whatever, when you have that scenario, does it actually work out and you get a shot? You know, the wind swirl, they take off, whatever happens. So I feel very fortunate to be able to get him um, solid, mature buck and to be able to spot and stalk him like that. Definitely a hunt that I'll never forget. And uh, couldn't be more happy to wrap my tag around him. So that's gonna wrap up this video. Hope you enjoyed it. I know I got long winded here, but I find the history uh, interesting and then kind of wanted to wrap up my season and really go into detail about the stock so really enjoyable hunt hope you enjoyed the video um, if you liked it make sure you hit the thumbs up button and I'll see you all in the next one thanks for watching